Hey there YouTube, this is Anthony bringing you another Wednesday video and today before I jump into the tour of all of my tanks I just wanted to say thank you to all of those who are subscribed to my channel. I recently hit 200 subscribers this weekend and um, for me that's kind of a big deal. first tank we're going to look at today is my little two and a half gallon that I keep near the floor here. Uh, this is essentially just a snail breeding and uh, grow out tank. And all these snails are essentially food for my Amazon puffers. And uh, I do also have a few spare plant trimmings and things growing in here. Uh, but other than that, that is pretty much it. The next tank we're looking at today is my five gallon fluval spec. Uh, this is home to my colony of royal blue tiger shrimp. Uh, this tank recently got a rescape in about uh, two, maybe two and a half months ago. Uh, all the plants have started to regrow back. As you can see, the um, Hygrophila penentophyta right on the front right is uh, growing up to the top now. Nothing's gotten trim as of yet, uh, but the plants are growing in nicely. I still am on the fence whether or not I want to add any fish into this tank. Um, I love having the shrimp in there on their own, uh, but um, I maybe want to see a little bit more activity in this tank, in the water column mostly. But I'm still on the fence, still trying to decide. Um, if you have any ideas of possible fish I can put into this tank, uh, let me know in the comments down below. All right, and the next tank we're looking at here is my Cobalt Aquatics 8-gallon uh, Micro View Aquarium. Uh, this tank also got a rescape not too long ago, just before the Fluval Spec did. The plants are all adjusted and they are showing a lot of growth. Um, I have already trimmed back the Rotala. Uh, the fish are are doing well. They're enjoying the the added space they have after the rescape. I kind of gave them a little more swimming space. And uh, I did decide to go ahead and put the cherry shrimp back into this tank uh, probably a month after I rescaped it. One of the things I wanted to accomplish when I rescaped this tank was to switch out the substrate to a darker one. Um, so it's still a dirted substrate, but I put black sand over it as opposed to white sand. And the main reason for doing this was to kind of bring out the darker reds in my cherry shrimp. And if I can find any, there we go, there's one that's out. You can see it is working. The females have really darkened up in their red. And I'm hoping that as they continue to breathe, that red will really become more prominent. So the next tank is my 29 gallon Paludarium uh, Amazon Biotope tank. This tank has probably gotten the most attention out of all of mine in the recent months, uh, just because it's been in the build process and the stocking process. Uh, I recently added in a school of 10 ember, no, I'm sorry, uh, 14 ember tetras and 10 reed tetras, as well as two epistogramma uh, nidsenai. I think I'm saying that right now. I think I've finally gotten that pronunciation down. Uh, but the, probably the most exciting news out of this tank is that the epistogramma have had their first spawn. Uh, I noticed the female guarding one of the seed pods uh, vigorously from the tetras. Uh, and so I decided to shine a light in there the other day and there was a clutch of about maybe 20, 25 eggs. And as of today, they are, um, they've hatched out and they are wigglers. So I'm hoping that soon we'll be able to see them out and about in the tank. As far as the plants above the surface go, they have been growing well. Uh, probably the most notable changes from when I first set it up was that I pulled out the pothos plant that I originally had in there. It was just um, growing way too much. I kind of underestimated how fast it would grow in here. Uh, and I also added in some new plants. 
I recently added in this vine that's right here. Also the plant next to it, which is a South American uh, dwarf orchid species. Uh, so far, both of those are doing well. I've kind of been seeing minimal growth on them because I'm suspecting they're just kind of uh, adapting to their new environment right now. Uh, but hopefully that dwarf orchid will um, start to bloom sometime soon. We'll really get a nice display out of that. And finally, we come to my 40-gallon breeder, uh, which is also a Amazon South American biotopish sort of tank and um, if you've seen it in my previous videos you may notice that I have tweaked it again uh, I just can't help myself when it comes to this tank I for some reason I kind of uh, like to play with it every now and then uh, probably the biggest change I did was to expose the driftwood um, which makes it a little bit easier for me to see the farwella catfish that are hanging out in there uh, other than that, there hasn't been really many changes to this tank. Uh, I do have a new spawn of Bolivian ram fry in here, which is kind of nothing new. It's kind of an every two to three week thing. They, they spawn, the fry make it to about the first week of free swimming phase, and then I don't see them anymore. Uh, I'm guessing the Ruminos tetras kind of feast on them. And since they are essentially hanging off of this tank, I should just really quick mention that the three Farlola Fry I have in the um, Hang On Breeder box are still doing well. They have quite the appetite. Um, I've been giving them a nice hefty piece of either Apache or um, veggies every day. And they've been going through that pretty quickly. And then I have the um, a few cherry shrimp in there as cleanup crew as well. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in for today's video. Uh, this was just kind of a quick little look at all of my tanks. Uh, I do have more videos on all of them throughout my channel, and I do always update on them pretty periodically, so stay tuned for those. Uh, once again, I want to thank all of my 200 subscribers, and if you're not subscribed to me already, click down below, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.